Bet you didn't see this one coming. I didn't even know we were gonna do this until last week. That's how last minute this whole plan was. In today's episode, we are going to be installing some real race car stuff on this car, and that is some air jacks. I gotta credit Dylan, and I have to credit Mr. Kyle. These two individuals really talked me into this idea and I wasn't about it. And then I was like, we should do it because no one's gonna be expecting this. If you don't know what an air jack is, this is essentially a quick jack system that when you're in the pits, when you're at the racetrack, when you need your car to go up on all four so you can change out wheels and tires, you can do that in an instant. I know nothing about this, but Kyle and Dylan both come from the off-road world, so they do have some experience in this. Kyle, have you ever fabricated air jacks to go on a car before? No. Well, there's a first time for everything, boys. So in today's episode, we're gonna install some air jacks on a street car. So my plan is, this is our little insert. This is gonna sit in the middle. So when we set it in there, this lowest point right here is going to be maybe a couple millimeters higher than the lowest point of the car. If we do wanna adjust it, we'll have this much up, this much down. These guys are going to go in here. It's gonna go slide right through there, leave it exposed, weld all this. This is gonna go through the bottom. It'll probably be roughly about right there on height. And then I'll probably do some type of tying up there. This is gonna be the front one. The rear ones are the same as the front. They're all gonna move the same. The front one, we're gonna hide in this little cranny right here. So just like the rear, we're gonna set these up at the same height so when the car goes up, it's an even height. So these will actually be a lot easier. It's similar to mounting like a bump stock can on a truck, if you know what that is. We're just gonna plate into the chassis. These ones will be very simple, but hidden. They'll be sick. One reason as to why we also chose these AP Racing ones, uh, I don't know if you guys are over this, is the length on this was one of the farthest that we could find. The ride height is gonna be high and it's also gonna have a lot of droop. So uh, we're not expecting this to get the car like, cause this looks huge. The car isn't gonna be sitting this high, I don't feel like. Our tire is probably gonna be only hanging off a couple inches. Cause the idea really in theory is just to get the tires off the ground so you can do a tire change. Um, this isn't going to literally elevate the car 18 inches in the sky, although I wish that were the case. We got figured out. The tube goes through the OEM body. This plate we added. The jacks, you can kind of see the adjustment. So I made the sleeves from middle to middle. So it has just the same amount as up adjustment as it does down. We're gonna start with them all the way up. That way there's just the most ground clearance and then we'll fine tune it later. Very cool, that's tight. The reason why I put it right there is because this vent right here scoops in right here. All that cool stuff will never be seen. You can kind of like stick your head in there. It still has room to clear against the carbon. So it's just kind of yeah. in that sweet spot. You got a few, in, like an inch back there or so. Yeah. Both sides on the rear gun. Now we can move to the front. The front's a little bit different. We don't have a cage. We don't have any like real structure up here. So the design I'm going with, this is kind of a little bit of a base plate I would call and not sure what I would even call this one, but we'll start with this one. This guy is gonna go in here. All these holes are gonna be rib nuts. So I'm gonna get all these nutted in and then I'm gonna stitch weld it as well. So we're gonna have some surface strength and then those rib nuts are gonna act like pegs. This is the jack sleeve. Jack sleeve is gonna go in here. This is gonna be welded with rosette welds right here. This is gonna slide in here and we'll weld it in at our base height. And then I'm gonna plate that to our base. That goes there, this goes here. This goes there, and then this will be plated as well. Front's a little bit tighter tolerance. This is the factory fender mount. You can kind of see, like, we can touch it if we want to. But essentially, it's gonna sit right there, same height as the rear, and we'll have all this adjustment if we want the pickup location closer to the ground. Now that we have all that fitted in, we can smell it in. officially finished all the fabrication needed for the M4 GT3. Two and a half months later, this car is finally 
coming to its D-Day of driving on the road. I just want to give a special shout out and thank you to Kyle. He's come in here and done all this in-house work, which is not an easy thing to do, and has conquered the daunting task of trying to make this thing fit this car. The air jacks are in, they're on all four corners, and now it is time for us to run the lines that are going to lead up to this point right here, which is where our airline is going to connect to this car. We bought a kit online that comes with everything that is needed, and we bought some accessories to kind of make our, I keep saying wiring in my head, but our plumb job is clean as possible. So we're gonna be using this aluminum line, and this oh, line is gonna run all Tell four doing, all to the back. We bought a few tools to do this job in-house. There it is. That was much better. Which is this bender, and this cutter. We're gonna have to take this on today. And you might be asking yourself at this point in the video, does Calvin always come this iced up? You're damn right yeah, he no, does. I don't. But the second question you might be asking yeah, see, yourself is, do we know how to do this? No. Well, we do have experience with brake lines. I don't know if this is But bending brake lines? I don't think so. We had to do it once. Now, one question I don't know is, does it have to be, well, the kit came with this, so I'm assuming it has to, but we only why have one aluminum bend, lines, and why not like airlines that we run in our bag system, which are like little plastic steel lines? Steel line, oh, well, oh. This is aluminum, not steel. Yeah, why not? Why not? I don't know. Piece? So maybe you guys down below in the comment section, if you have an idea as to why, let us know, because this would be a whole lot easier if we were just running plastic line, but there's a reason why they sent this. We're gonna go ahead and do it. A lot of really cool things here. This is some real race car stuff. But want to see something cool? Come here, yeah, come yeah, here. Yeah. So this is going money. to be connected to our tank. That tank is full of compressed air, which is going to activate all these air jacks. By the end of this video, we should be using this. This gets pushed on like, like that. And it goes, psh, psh, I guess. And then you take that off. Normally, in some cars, there's a, re a relief valve that will allow the pressure in all the jacks to relieve themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But these are the AP racing jacks that have self extinguishers in them. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but the exhaust valves are within the systems themselves. So I believe that we should be able to just pull this once they're inflated or push it in one or the other. I'm not quite sure yet. And it should dump itself and drop to the floor. That's going to be pretty rad. Dylan, Dylan knows. What, I don't know if dump, Dylan's ever done this before. How to dump myself? I've done it. You've done it? I've done myself. And that must have been a really bad breakup. It was rough for one of them, but the other one's fine. I promised to film the rest of them, but we wanted to test a super small section first before we started showing it on camera because none of us have done this before, but Dylan spent a good amount of time just like drawing out the map line of how we're gonna do all these hard lines, which you guys will start to see throughout the rest of this video. But we're now gonna move on to the second portion, which is making our line to go from the top of the T-fitting to wrap around the top of the fender. And we're probably gonna stop maybe here, maybe here. Depends on what Calvin can get. Yeah, we sent Calvin to the hardware store because ideally what we're gonna try to do is get some, uh, think of it almost like, as like a union or a female to female break in the line because bending this steel line isn't the easiest thing, I guess with how much practice we have right now. Sorry, I say steel line. I've been calling it aluminum this whole entire video and I it's, said steel. It's true. Calvin yeah. has been talking from steel versus aluminum. When you follow these body lines, there's a bunch of different angles and pitches that it all has to follow. And if we were to do one big bendy line that goes from the all the way from there to wrap all the way to here, that's gonna get extremely difficult to bend once you're at your maybe fifth or sixth bend when you have the rest of the line. So our thought is if we can get some sort of break in the line, or at least just make a union so we can think of it like Mario, it's like the halfway flag. You can save your progression and start again. I like that a lot. You like that? Yeah, I, I thought it, I'm playing a lot of Mario, so it kind of just felt natural. We're gonna follow these little lines right here, and I'm gonna show you guys how we do. I think it's gonna go well. This is gonna be a very slow process. This is one of the coolest parts, but very, very meticulous. Oh, and then you stop when you get your desired degree, and there's a marker, so 90 to 90, and that created a 90 degree bend. There's a little bit of like play you can do because it is aluminum, you, you can bend it fairly easy, but really tough to have those straight lines look really straight. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's, it's close, it's not 100% accurate. We almost could I make it like an 80 degree bend, but that still works too. If we want, do you want to go up along this more or you just want to run it straight across this? I would run it, I would do less. I would just go straight across. But so now where it gets weird where we just bent it on one plane, but now we need to like bend it on another plane to have it go like out. You know what I mean? That's where it gets weird. But yeah, you, might like, to, you might be able to do it by hand. You have like X, Y axes, right? Yeah. So like this can change like this. Oh. And then also yeah. all of this can change. 
relatively simple, but just making sure that we stay on that and not get lost in the sauce is difficult. Just time consuming. And you have to have a lot of, I feel like that's the thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is planning and foresight. Cause all of this, especially since it's not a race car and it's not going through it, we're not punching holes in it. Yeah. You have to go around everything that we've done, everything that's existing, plan for whatever sure bends you want to do in this area. doesn't touch any certain pieces because actually now that I think about it, the, the latch portion of it, that latch portion is going to yeah. sit right here. And then remember the bucket is here. So it's like, we have to stay above the bucket, above this portion when of it, When I made this below decision, the it seemed like such a good idea to go the extra mile and put air jacks. And I was it's doing still, it, I'm like, still. damn, this is going to be a headache. It's the M4 GT3 build. Is what it is. The headache, the biggest headache we've ever had in the shop. We also have these little P clamps, and these P clamps are gonna help keep the line actually sturdy so we can make anchor points. So Dylan and I just marked it off of this small point. You can't, I can barely even see it myself. So we'll drill a hole here. Ooh, it's gonna fit. All right, we don't have a third person to hold the camera right now, so we are going to apply this, and then I'll show you guys. P clamp. Is on. Maybe we'll add more after the job, but for right now it's anchored. And I don't know, I would say that this portion right here to do these lines has probably taken us 35, 45 minutes. Yeah, and like figuring out all We're the- We're still figuring it out, but I'll be honest with you guys, this little portion right here, Dylan just did that by hand. It actually might be easier in some cases for us to just bend it by hand and actually use that big tool. But for the 90s and stuff, we'll definitely use the tool. But when it comes to like kind of form fitting and doing micro adjustments, we're definitely, I think, gonna do this by hand. Like this whole portion right here, probably by hand so we get to that corner. But we need to make sure that the big fender fits and then the lower portion that goes here, because I think we're gonna have a problem. I think if we stay just below this and kind of ride this ridge, and hug it around here. We oh, does it sit flush right here? We can go hold the other side up real quick. We'll find out. Oh, oh he's he's smart, everyone. Say we're hi. just gonna see, because it should mirror on both sides. So what we're talking about, oh boy. Ooh, it's going to work, as we're technically coming through here. So as long as we come here and stay underneath that lip, like you said, uh -huh. you're, we are right. You okay. should be clear to so here. We'll yeah, so for here, we have to come from here and then wrap all the way to here. Ooh, you know what? Why don't we just put the bumper on, dog? Damn, dude! Damn, might as well. Yeah, uh, somewhere. Dude. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's all one right now. I'm gonna put you boys down. Does it make a complete wall right there? No, it doesn't. I just have to stay. Oh, God. This is nice because now I can look at it. There is a super tight hole there. I can mark. <laughs> <laughs> that, Dylan, that Dylan's gonna thread his rope oh through. Oh my god. Calvin also went to the store, I told you guys a second ago, to get like those like union bridges so we can create those Mario halfway points. Well, the store's <laughs> closed today because oh, yeah. it's the day before July 4th. I would bet you guys that we're just gonna try to be advantageous and we're gonna fucking do a one dude, shot all the way around. Dude, we're gonna, we're gonna bang it out one shot. We're just gonna do it. I think we can. No, no, no. Look at me. We're gonna do it. Okay, we'll do it. And I don't think there's anything else to worry about here. It looks weird, guys, because there's a gap here, but that's literally how our, the kit is, because when the trunk closes, it fills all of this. So we should be able to just run it all the way through here, and then our plug-ins here. It's gonna be doable, I think. Nearly finished with the back left line. We also got some hose from the store, and we're just using it on areas that's gonna be coming in contact with the car. And then Dylan had the idea to kind of wrap it around. Just some parts with the car where like it could have some vibration just to eliminate that. Calvin also got the pieces we needed, the little Mario halfway points, those are in here, and then Dylan's getting crafty with his bends. This is now for the back right uh, side, because the back right side, are you just gonna mirror it just cause? Yeah, why not? That's fancy. That way in case anybody ever looks at it ever. Ever. They can judge us. I mean, it looks rad though, and we also started to put some of the P clamps in, and the line it's actually fairly sturdy. You can pull on it and it doesn't move anywhere, which is really awesome. So it's coming together. We're definitely getting better at it. And Calvin's up here micromanaging some of the wires because some of the wiring was touching the metal and got a little hot and some of the, it's a little, it's a little melted. Not too melted where it's gonna damage the car. But good thing we got the wiring. Ferrari wiring specialist here. Calvin I am no job. specialist, I'm a bunk boy. Calvin just started putting back the trunk wiring. After oh. TJ painted all oh, the yeah. corners. We just sprayed all the corners. It's not pretty, but it's just to get all the exposed rust on the inside covered up so we can put all this back. Once this car is finished and goes into paint, I'm gonna have SOS Customs do a trunk setup because a lot of like the carpeting and stuff we can't use anymore because we have all these like side bins made. So I really wanna have this thing look as OEM as possible for it being a street car. So so I just went ahead and shot all of this metal that was exposed and steel it just to cover it so it wasn't continuing to rust from the inside out. To be clear, you cleared the rust off. I watched you do it. Oh, so yeah. So it was raw. There was no rust. Yeah. I just wanted to clarify. No, 
Did it sound like I just sprayed over? Oh yeah, it sounds like you're like, well, there's a bunch of rust. We covered it. We're good. Oh, no, no, <laughs> okay. T T J so just to be really no, clear. Dylan, T J has a thing with like rust means the metal exposed metal. Okay, okay. Then, then tons. Yeah, I, this car is covered it. in rust. Then it's if that's fine. the case, yeah. I'm just gonna let him keep saying it because I thought it was funny. <laughs> so now we're putting this all back, and what's really cool is Calvin went ahead and kind of made new rib nuts to hold in all the equipment that was on each side. So all of it's relatively in the same position as that it was when we originally started. So that when this car ever does need to get serviced or we need to find something or diagnose something, everything is relatively in the same spot, which is really rad. I also wanna show you something that I recently got in. We went ahead and got some CSL laser taillights for the M4, which are super rad. These came on the CSL M4 and they are Awesome, they have this really cool glowing line effect, which today we should have this car started and running once everything gets put back. So hopefully we'll be able to see these things live, but it's gonna make all the taillights be one solid red when previously they were like this two-tone, which to be completely honest, I've never been a fan of these taillights. I thought they were always super gross. And I'm a really big fan of like the dragon scale lights on the F80, and these give me dragon scale vibes. I already went ahead and put one in on the trunk just to see it. Oof. Yeah. Oof. But yeah. It's gonna look really good. There's gonna be some adjusting that needs to be done once we actually get this thing finished. But this morning, Dylan and I went ahead and leveled off the bottom of the jack stands and just put a grinder to it just to make the bottom of the peg as smooth as possible. And I'm talking about like the collar system that holds the actual air jack, not the air jack themselves, because these are like coilover collars. So you wanna have a flat surface as possible so there's not a high point and then it's only locking on the high point and not mating on the full surface. So. Dude, did you toot just now? That was you. That was my butthole is here. Dog, yours is there. Did you just fart it on me, dog? There. It went. <laughs> <laughs> that was. I can't believe you just did Look that. Look at you stained I'm it. Like, I'm you like, stained I'm it. Like I like height. Dude, dog. I didn't fart. I would tell you if I farted. I've done it plenty. Dog, dude, that was. Real well, as I, I hold my breath and move yeah, over well, here, dude, you can just tell him when I had it. So finished all four off. So while I go ahead and catch my breath on the fresh air out here, um, <laughs> dude, show them the lines. Show them the lines on this side. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're doing a lot of showing what we did and not showing us doing it. But we're just trying to jam and get this done. All the contact points. Gonna wear. Then we have a P clamp here that's gonna hold it down. Wait for it, like that. Mm -hmm. And then when you do a flare or uh, some kind of bridge, we made the we make a Mario little offset for, for it. it. So it stands. See right here. See this level? Oh god. And then there's oh, an offset right here. No. That's it. I mean it's oh, oh god. god. Oh dude, dude. Oh. big and bulky and Oh no. dude. Okay. Oh duh. What are you gonna fart my face again? That was you! Alright, so we're getting there. We're almost ready for our first test. We're getting antsy and we're just like trying to put our head down and get done as fast as possible because we all want to see this thing tested out. I feel like you haven't picked this camera up in a minute. I haven't. Hello everyone. We've officially finished plumbing the car. So I'm gonna walk you front to back in its beauty. There's probably like a few more P clamps we're gonna add just to like I give it its rigidity. Myself. All the aluminum lines what? are fairly sturdy on their own, so it shouldn't have too much vibration. They're all tight and it runs oh all God. the way to the back. Ooh. So Ian's here. Shout out Ian. Hi. Uh, We've up, never sorry. done this before. There's a few different questions that are running through our head. And as you guys can imagine, this is a lot of PSI that's gonna run through this. And we don't know how fast these air jacks are gonna come out. Couldn't I couldn't find a manual online. So how much PSI are we talking? The cans are good for they say max operating pressure is 30 bar. And one bar is it says 13, at the top 15, 14 bar, seven. Yeah. So depending on how much PSI we're running through, it's either gonna go really fast or a little bit slower. So we don't want to test this and have too much pressure and the jack just like, like shoot down because we're gonna test first with the car raised. So when the air jacks come out, we'll see it Whoa. stop. We're gonna test it with the car raised oh first. Our see, theory is that the regulator controlling the compressed air, obviously if you have it at 100 PSI or 200 PSI, it's all gonna vary on how fast the air jack is gonna extend. And then it should have a self extinguish feature. We're pretty sure we, Dylan swears that's the one we ordered. Self what? Integrated exhaust valve? Exhaust valve, extinguish, whatever. Extinguish. Sorry, yeah. it's been a long day. 1,000 PSI, that's the input. Sorry. Outputs this side. 700 creeping down. Where are you reading 700? The, the red, red number is PSI. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's bar and then, okay, I understand. I understand. This side means what? 
This is the input pressure. That's how much the bottle's at. So if I close this, it will close. It'll okay. Down. So we're gonna start at like a hundred psi. Yeah. yeah. Probably we'll like we'll that. see what happens, and we'll adjust that with this little nozzle right here. It doesn't matter until we. Calvin abuses, this abuses nice. me. Oh, like Calvin that, abuses man. me, and I have proof of it. Why, why, why does it feel you? like it's just gonna? Boom! Stop! <laughs> <laughs> he gets so scared. Dude, no, I want the I camera to know it was everyone. No, you could see you every could see single person. <laughs> no, you could see wait, the happened? camera shake. Like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, you did that? Yeah. Why are you backing up? Wherever you are, why are you backing up? Wherever you are right now is just zone. Is it moving at all? Do it again? Yeah. Yeah, uh, no. No, it's... that'll be down. Dude, can we stop? It's not moving. I was gonna immediately. Uh, so we just pressurized it. You wanna get a nail? What does 800 PSI feel like? Uh, do you have a like, something you, you can put you in there? You know, uh, Ocean Gate? We're obviously a little bit timid right now. Just shove it in there! Shove it in there! Shove it in there! No, because it'll lock on it. I'd rather, <laughs> I'd rather pull one of the lines. Th that's gonna be our regulator? Oh, yeah. it's a, it's a missile. Dylan, it's a missile launcher. Nope. missile launcher. Shut up. Shut up. Now dial the question. That doesn't do anything either. That well, here, close the valve side. That should be zero. How is that zero? My dials aren't changing. Dylan's about to inject nitrogen into his blood. Okay, now I'm tightening it. Embolism. It's tightened. Okay. The bottle's at 1800 PSI. What's this bottom knob? But you can. It, it says, looks like it's a. Dryer. It says air on it. It says ergonomic hand wheel for easy handling. Right. 1800 PSI. That's I just hold figured on. it out hold off on. camera. Theoretically, even though this is cracked, right? Shut if this is shut, it shouldn't go through the line. Yes. Right? So that's so a valve to the bottle, wanna, and this is a valve to the regular. You want to test it? I'm cracked open. You're cracked? My yeah. guy? Okay, now slowly loosen that. All right, now close that. Nice. All right, so I'm going to close this now. All right, now try it. Yeah. Is it open? What's it reading? 200. 200, 200 PSI. Sweet. There it is. Uh, wow. Look Shove it us. in there. It's like a light bulb. Is that it in there. our... Wow, you just fully grinded your... Okay, so I'm just going to... Hold the lance and get yeah, only on the blue. And we're, we're the don't blue. put that near your face. All right, you ready? I'm scared. Just do it. <laughs> oh my God. Let her eat. Let her eat. Turn around if you're scared. What's the worst? Like, hold it in. Well, it'll lock it. It'll in. lock it. And then, the and then you just... I'm gonna do it. Aggressive. Aggressive. Oh, oh, there it is. Oh. All right, we found leaks. That's cool. Now what? Leaks <laughs> everywhere. That's fine. Oh no, that's way skinnier than I thought. Yeah. What is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty sick. Hold on, just do it. Yeah, what? What happened? Oh, Calvin pulled it. Whoa! All right, so with them extended, literally every single connection point has somewhat of a small leak. No. But we also didn't know how much to crank it because we didn't want to damage them, so. It's both aluminum ones that didn't come with this kit to okay. this. Yeah, we ran out of some of the lines, we went to the store and got more, and those ones need to be cranked down quite a bit more. How? Oh! Oh my gosh, that's so dope. And I was wondering, I was like, these things have to be oiled, and they are. So unfortunately, this and this aren't making the seal that we need. This is the extra line that we bought, and on both sides, it's leaking on this identical spot. So, we'll have to do a different ferrule, which is the brass fitting that is the, pretty much a sandwich plate that creates yeah, the- Yeah, that crushes it. Yeah. So, these red horse ones that we got from JBA have the proper ferrule that we need, yeah. that we can use with these. So mm -hmm. we're either gonna order those or just get the ferrules, hopefully from JBA, or yeah. get one more of those and use that here. But that's the only quote unquote fail point we have is the two different systems made. Which tomorrow we can go and get that. It's currently July 4th, all the stores are closed. But Dylan just said it and I agree. Let's put it down and let's see what happens. There's a small leak, so there's a chance that it might not stay up. Or maybe we can just increase the PSI out of the bottle and it will stay up. Not quite sure, but we're still tempted to see what this thing does under its own pressure. Okay, that's as low as the car is gonna go with the lift. What? Uh, at the PSI it's currently at. Uh -huh. and if it doesn't lift it, Ian's gonna crank the PSI up. Okay. Curious to see what happens. Nope. Not enough PSI. Oh my god, there it goes. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh, 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 oh. You're fine. You're fine? Tons okay. of clearance. What the fuck? Yeah, there's two. Oh, no. More, We're getting a. Uh, oh, there it goes. Yeah. Oh! Yeah, leave it there for a minute. Wow. <laughs> You're gonna want to be careful when you lower it because it's gonna slam onto the yeah. lift. I'm just gonna do low PSI. He's very, he's very good at it. I 
I got whenever you're ready. What do you guys want? Wow, that's <laughs> awesome. Damn, dude. That's so tight. Oh, oh, oh my oh god. Oh my god. Yeah, that's a. Uh, that, that car has air jacks on it. Wow. Damn. That's at, a, oh. Yeah, at 600 PSI, more leaks. Were you guys kids ever? And you did this, and you're like <laughs> And you put the foam on your face like a beard? Uh, no. <laughs> that was sick. Just a test run, but that was sick. Dude, this car was once a super clean looking GD2, and now it was a chopped up Frankenstein. Dude, it's gonna be sick. This is hot rod This is hot, this, this looks, hot this thing rod. looks like a hot rod right now. Dylan went around the car, and he tightened all the banjos that were still giving us the leak. One of the things that we're talking about off camera is can we control the exhaust on all of the valves to try to mitigate the speeds from front to rear. Our fear is that if we have it up all the way, remember it's still on the lift, so if it was on the lift, we don't know how much more compression is left in the front to go lower. So we just wanna make sure that it doesn't dump all the way in the front first and then we potentially damage our front lip and then the back goes. So we're gonna try to make the fronts dump slower so the rear would go first rather than the front. I'm sure all the stuff we could search up online but it's just a bunch of dudes working on, working on stuff and would rather not read a manual and just figure it out. So we're gonna try and test one more time. But this time when the car is up, we're gonna move the arms out so the car can actually go to the floor. We're curious to see how fast all of these air jacks are going to exhaust dump. And that's a weird way to say that, but, or I guess, release, it's release their pressure release of the pressure. all the jacks. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, we just straight piped all these air jacks and we deleted all the cats. So, dude, our exhaust <laughs> is just gonna be screaming. I'm really excited about EPA, it. EPA, EPA. Uh, don't talk the EPA, bro. <laughs> bro, bro. To adjust the exhaust flow, it's just there's a, a port. There's probably four or five of them. You see how the hole's open? Mm -hmm. And then I can just close it whatever amount I want. So honestly, we could probably close them and have all of the excess go out the back. But I'm just going to go uh, full open rear and then half in the front since that's what we're really worried about. But yeah, it's so this way the back will drop first, the front will go yeah, slow. Yeah, if we're not afraid of the back dropping, it's like... But on lift. So we're going to raise it and then we're going to pull the lift arms. No. No, the car's gonna raise itself, and we're gonna move the arms out of the way, so... Oh, we're gonna send it! Yeah, okay. we're gonna... I, hold on, I don't know if we're gonna be able to remove the arms, the jacks are the, 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 the The sticks are in the way. Because the arms go this way. The, mm. the, the actual air jacks are in the way. Mm. Fair point, fair point. Yeah, jack it up, fuck it. Fuck it! Send what do you mean, in. what do you mean push the, the men? It's still not gonna clear. Right, 400 PSI, baby! He just wants to send it. I know he Sending does. it! Right. Three, two! Okay. Oh, you know what? It will clear. Keep going. Okay, I'm gonna stick my hands under it. Okay, so before you release, you should be able to pull it in, Ian. Uh-oh, that side. Good enough. Uh, make sure that's not gonna hit. It should be okay. Yeah, Okay. Ready? Hold on. No. I don't know. Do the release first so it's slower, and we'll just see what happens. I'm gonna speed the rear. Damn. Damn. Okay, I say we can send it. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I say we can send, yeah, it. We send it. We're gonna bump now from 400 to 600, so it should go a lot faster. What the heck? Is that, what is going on? From airbags to air jacks, baby. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that's tight. Wow. You're going to dump it? Yeah. Yeah. Release the plunger. Release the plunger. Oh, God. Why am I scared? 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 Why am I Okay, so we know what to do now. We're gonna do it again. Yeah, now we're gonna do it again. So this thing wasn't latched, obviously, so okay. it kind of bounced a little so we'll bit. Duct tape that's that's fine. So you gotta be a you gotta man that. You gotta man that. Yeah. that, that you you gotta, so what happens from the rear? So you're, at yeah, 500 psi, so you're, you're overcoming the. So you're pulling it like yeah. that, right? No, yeah. So this is in, and this is stays in, and then this is plunged, and then when you're done, you pull the plunger, 
And then you still have to leave this. But we're we're when we did it, we were like, whoa. <laughs> and then we pulled it, and it was already starting to release. So I'm gonna go pull and then release. Okay. So, but I'm gonna get that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. I just asked him how much air we burned through. We're already out. We smoked it. Really? Damn, that sucks. I think we need one more. Yeah, well, I, it, consider, a tank. considering we are just okay. leaking it entirely at 600 PSI. Yeah, we're, le we're leaking a lot from those front two lines too. And it has to take so much more to go to the front after that. Uh, I don't think we're gonna be able to get it up. Oh. <laughs> Kelvin, people have personal problems at home. I'm serious. Mm. I don't think we're gonna be able to get it up. Let's, uh, let's try it. <laughs> What's the worst gonna happen? It's gonna... <sighs> We're gonna try this again. We don't think there's enough air in the bottle to get it up, but we're gonna do it for Wait, fun. It like because that. if it does get it up, Dylan wants to release it super fast so we can just see it just drop. <laughs> is this so, a, is this a hymns ad? Uh, we're gonna, this is not a hymns ad. So we're gonna try one more time? Yeah, send yeah, it, brother. I'm going up all the way. As soon as it's up all the way, I'm gonna release it. Yeah, you do it. Oh, come on, baby, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, No, it's, ah. yeah! All right, go down! Go! Oh! Ah. <laughs> that was so tight! <laughs> what? That was so oh, tight! Man. It was the coolest thing ever That was fucking sick! <laughs> that made it so worth it! It made it so it made it sick! Ball. Oh yeah, Calvin being wrong was uh, was epic. Oh was wait, the size is so sick. Dude, so that crazy. just made up for the eight thousand dollars this stupid kit cost me. That right there. He's gone. He's yeah. gone. That, that made it worth it. God, that was sick. To do that when the full kit's hey. on and it's painted, dude. Ag a good life for wherever we go and drive it. Oh, hey, dude. Check, check, wait, check look how look how even look how even it drops. No. Ready? Okay, so that's half in the rear. Uh, no, 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 it, it, it goes up anyway. No, I mean, uh, exhausting. Oh, dude. dude. Yeah, that was, oh, that was, it was so, dude. That was so sick. That made it worth it. That made it worth it. That made it, made it, worth it. That made it so worth it. That made it so worth it. As much as this car has been giving me the biggest headaches ever, that made up for a lot yeah, of it. Good job, M4. It's now the next morning. Calvin went to the store and got new fittings and I new fittings for I us. I literally went there and he was like, you cleaned me out, dog. What do, what do you want from me? <laughs> we gotta find a solution here, bud. So he gave me, they actually had the ferrules. I'll show you. Which is awesome. Which is awesome, which is convenient because we wanted to do another junction, but the more junctions you have, the more likely it's gonna leak. And the more bunk it's gonna look. And no one's gonna see it. It's already No pretty, one's gonna it, see it, but we're pretty, It's pretty bunk already. <laughs> it's already I'm just gonna try and replace this ferrule, tighten this up, because this works with this line. If it works, fantastic. Epic. If it doesn't, we'll have to, do the we'll have to set off the airbags. I'll tell them about that in just a second. Uh, I also went to the store this morning, got a brand new tank. Okay, this is nitrogen we were talking about yesterday. I confirmed that it's nitrogen we're using. So I got a brand new tank. We blew through the last one yesterday just because of how much we were leaking. So we can test again with that today. One question that we kind of were thinking, and I saw some comments on Instagram about it, is we're testing this with the battery disconnected, but when we connect the battery and the car is running, is the drop from the air jacks enough to set off the airbags? Which initially kind of scared me. I thought, oh my God, I think it might. Thinking about it farther, what sets off airbags is the crash sensor. The crash sensor, I believe, to my knowledge, is set off by physical altercation, not by G-forces or movement or shake. Think about it when your car's on track, you're going over rumble strips or whatever, that's a lot of vibration going through the chassis, that's a lot of G-forces being used and the air sen the crash sensors don't trigger anything. I'm gonna look it up online and I really suggest you guys down below if some of you guys are master technicians, because I know a lot of you guys are and a lot of times you guys know way more than us. Do we think the car dropping four or five inches, landing on suspen suspension and compressing, is that enough to set off the airbags? I don't think so. I surely hope not, or else we're gonna have to figure that out but I wanna show you guys something kind of cool. The Street Hunter team is here with a swarm of Teslas. If you guys don't know, Street Hunter designed a stock body kit for Teslas. Now this stock body kit comes with side skirts. We also have a rear duck bill, which is right here. We also have a front splitter and we also have, which I haven't shown you guys yet if you're a fan of the Clips channel, it also has a rear carbon fiber diffuser, which you can see our little like notorious V-notch 
follows with the duck bill and infuser. So that is the full kit and we're debating about making some more items. I think we are. Keep our fingers crossed. I'm trying to convince the rest of the team to do it. But they're gonna go shoot a video today with Anthony because yes, he's sir. also a Tesla 3 owner. So I'm they're gonna go Tesla shoot a full boy. video. Anthony has everything but the diffuser. So we have a brand new diffuser that we're gonna unbox and show you guys. And I thought I would sprinkle it into this video and kind of just show you guys because it's, I think they're honestly pretty cool. And there's a few cars that are these two boys. They have their Teslas that are running the full street hunter kit. I thought it was pretty cool and I thought I would show you guys because I think a lot of you guys feel the same way as me. Teslas don't really excite me. EV cars don't really excite me. Yes, they're fast. Yes, you know, all those things. But at the end of the day, the combustion motor is what gets me excited. And if I don't hear something, I'd rather have a slower car that sounds amazing than a faster car that sounds like nothing. So Teslas, it's just not really my jam, but that being said, I think we've done a really good job at making a car that doesn't look all that entertaining, pretty entertaining. So these are both tiny bot colors. Don't know the colors of the wraps, but these boys are running air. They're running pretty cool wheels. That guy has blood so three, I'll show you that in just a second. But diffuser, duckbill, side skirts, and they also have the front lip. And then this one is just stanced out on Blitz 03s, which are really cool. So they're gonna go shoot a Street Hunter promo video today, which I'm really excited about. I just think it looks amazing. I think it looks really cool. And I wanna give a little uh, tip of the hat and a good job to these boys because they're making that shit look really cool. And I'm stoked that Street Hunter is on their cars because those builds are honestly what really excite me. People having builds that aren't the, you know, typical build, something new, something different. And whether you may or may not like it, it's something new to the scene. And that's what's really important for the community. And I guess Dylan's just deciding to flex on everyone today. He's taking off his HRE flow forms and throwing on his work wheels. Truly just embodying eliminate spec, not only with the work wheels, but also nice this eliminate stretch. fitment here of just stretched hot boy on the Accelerus dog. Nice <laughs> choice, nice choice. If if that stance fitment ain't gonna get you a flat, those Accelerus will. So looking forward to seeing how their day goes. But let's go ahead and unbox this and see how the diffuser looks. This thing is beautiful, nice little aggression. This is the second diffuser Street Hunter's ever done. And one thing that I'm really stoked about this is this diffuser isn't like six inches is long. It actually goes back over three feet like a true diffuser should. Absolutely beautiful. You got the carbon on the back, carbon on the front. They're about to throw it on his car. So I'm going to let them do that. This looks amazing. Super proud of the Street Hunter team. And if you're not following the Instagram or you want this updates, or if you're one of the millions of people who have said, TJ, please make parts for my car. If you want all the updates, follow the Instagram, Street Hunter Designs and you can get all your answers there. Unfortunately, the line that was going to here was screwed up. So Calvin's going ahead and just making the new connection point. Master of all trades, Pep. I am a master of all mothers. <sighs> Including Anthony's mom. Right, Anthony? Yeah, I got married. Right. Yeah. Right. So. Oh, <laughs> talking about hey, my fucking mother? I got huh? married. You talking about my I got mom? married. How did you know? How did you know talking about your mom? I got married Tuesday. Time for the test. We got a we got a peanut gallery. Peanut gallery time. I'm excited. Dylan's very strong. I, I don't think. Oh, it's I, right. I don't think that we it understand. Takes quite a lot of pressure to do that. To pull this out. To pull, you know? <laughs> yeah, I should tape that down again because that's gonna flop. Hopefully we have zero leaks and we can leave it pressurized. That's the goal. We'll see if it ends up being like that. Cause I'm really hoping that we can leave it up and like walk away from it with zero pressure loss. But I don't know. I think the banjos were leaking a little bit. What PSI is this at? 500. Okay. You were doing it yesterday. I was filming, so I don't know what's, let's do it. I'm gonna jam it in there. And I'm going to send it. We're going to test the new lines that Calvin did. Maybe asking yourself, does Calvin know what he's doing when it comes to aluminum lines and ferrules? Oh, you just knocked the tank and now it just lost its... Is it leaking now? Yeah. Oh, it's so finicky. Pause. Pause vid. Send her home, bud. Nope. The Calvin job is leaking. Oh, yeah. Kill the air. Pull it. <laughs> Hell yeah. It, it tore this off. Yeah, I should have taped it down more. Uh, um, it's still leaking a good amount. Like, where? bad right here on both sides. On both 
both sides. Yeah, it was big. It doesn't look, it, to me, in my opinion, it's not a tightening thing. It's just it's a seating thing. It's a seating. Thing. Like it was it was it was on the backside. It was a pretty strong stream of air. Or just up here. it was hard to tell down here because it was mainly coming out of here, but on both sides. All right, it's the next day. We put the kit on the car. We build it outside. We wanted to do this at least once with all the pieces on to kind of create what it will look like when it's ready. Although it's not ready. We still have a few leaks as you guys saw yesterday. We still have to put our fender back on the inside right here. But we're gonna do one last test before we end it because it just feels right. So we're gonna be filming this from every different direction so we don't miss a thing. And of course, as we have this parked outside, this dumpster truck is gonna come oh through and smack the side of our car. Air jack test M4 GT3. Immediately, Immediately pull the other one. Put your finger yeah, there. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Hard. Hard. Give her help. Hard as fuck. I'm gonna do it. It's not. No, it's send not. it. Hold this. Put your hand up. You ready? Yeah. You want it? Get in front of the door. Get in front of the door for the thumbnail. Yeah, boy, yeah. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> if you want to run, if you want to try it, yeah. Oh, come on, baby. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Oh. She's out. She's out. That's it. Cool. This is the last time we're gonna see the M4 for a while. We might make some other videos of doing some minute work. There's a lot of meticulous drilling and sensor mounting and wire tucking we have to do. We are going to start deconstructing the whole entire front end. All of the metal pieces are coming off the car. They're all rusted and they're gonna be sent off to powder coat so we can get this one solid color. There's a few parts in the rear, but the air jacks are mounted. We have new lines coming in because as you can tell, the lines are still leaking. So we had to order the same diameter line that we got from Europe. It's been a catastrophe, but 100% unnecessary. Do not need that on a street car, but to say we have it on a street car, and when we do track this thing and we get to use it for fun, it's gonna make it worth it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video where we're gonna start tackling that Miata because the motor is ready to go in the car. We'll see you guys then. Peace out and keep moving forward.